Uh, my name is Gordon, Gordon Fitzgerald. I'm the prop master on this production. Basically, it's um, kind of responsible for organising the props, collection of them. Then we sort them out in the store into the different sets, the logistics of it, and also the practical dressing of the, the props, the furniture and the small props onto the set. Castle Black. The design of the set is very stark and very bleak, so the dressing is fairly minimal in there. Anything that the, the actors use is very, very basic and quite, quite primitive looking, so there's no luxury of any sort. In Winterfell, there's a degree of comfort. What we tried to do was, in the courtyards, have the scenes and the props reflect life in the community there. In the warmer area of King's Landing, there's a greater kind of detail to smaller, smaller props. They're quite luxurious in comparison. For the tournament, the biggest element there were dealing with the tents and the, the size of the, the larger tents. The banqueting area w was quite impressive when that was dressed for the King's feast. The Dothraki, they're very primitive. They travel quite light, so really everything's designed that it can fold and pack and then go onto the horses. We usually have the, the, the working strips to begin with and the props, you know, are going to be complicated. You set them in motion and then it's really a case of keeping up to, to speed with any new props that are introduced. To make an entire book is quite a slow and complicated process, but for any of the books that are actually being read, we had to have the books go to a publisher in London and actually be made up and bound. For any of the pages that are being leafed through will have been made up here, but there may only be 10, 12 of those pages in a book that would have had thousands of pages. But to make that in reality, the medieval monks should be there for years and years creating these books. You'll be pleased to learn I've saved the crown hundreds of thousands. The pig pen, we had actually put real pig shit in, but it was so unpalatable, the smell was fairly dreadful, that we then had to take it all back out again. We then did various tests, which involved a mix of compost and various other elements, which looked kind of as realistic, but was safe for the actors to use and, uh, and for the crew to be around. The cages were redesigned really to accommodate the size of, of the new dragons. We had one of the carpenters remake the cages. Once he is finished, then they go to the drapes department, who then do all the skin work on them and all the bindings. And from there, they then go to the prop painter and his department, who then work on the aging of them all to look as if the dragons have been living in the cages. Something like the loot train involves a lot of different departments, all working at sort of the very extremes of their abilities, I think. This was a difficult challenge because there are so many different looks and phases of the battle that come into play. There's a lot of continuity to make sure that we're in the right space, in the right part of the process, reflecting the right amount of burn. And then do it in between the cracks of everybody else doing their job. Because the entire sequence, is a wagon train and involves 27 wagons and there are various bits of dressing. We have to reshuffle the entire set constantly, which means dressing 180 degrees or 360 depending on the camera movement. So it means we have to be very particular when it comes to dressing our burnt elements, our unburnt elements, our partial burnt elements. There are so many stages to consider, but it's definitely a hell of a lot more fun when it gets into the bloody battle. We have a dye that we're using, which is a, an eco-friendly dye, which dyes things black to make it look very charred and burnt. And we're using several forms of ash as well to dress in and make it all look authentic, along with charcoal and stuff like that. Maybe when you're watching it, it doesn't necessarily stand out. And that means we've done our job because people just accept this is the world and that's the environment. We are the front line of defense and detail is our job. So we're very happy about it. You're nothing without your daddy. Your daddy ain't here. Never forget that. Yeah, this should help you remember. I wouldn't say she welcomes him unconditionally. You know, he's returned with a piece missing. And I think it's a piece that she held great envy and uh, admiration for.
because Cersei commissioned it, I wanted it to have a sort of a, a softness, a sort of beauty to it that obviously if a, a man had designed it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be like that. So we actually took um, the reference from her armour that she wore last year. And we took the patterning from that and then applied it to the hand. I mean, I did my little sketches, and then I worked with the art department. So we looked at the pattern, we gave him the patterns, and it took a month to make. Now, with one guy, Luca, made it because I really wanted it to be metal and I really wanted it to be beaten out in the way that it should be. We did a cast and then he had to make an iron hand based on Jamie's cast and then he hammered the brass around it and then we had two plastic made as well. This is one of the golden hands and this is the uh, that Cersei, she has it made for him because she's just so disgusted by his stump. Um, this is a plastic version. But actually the metal one was in, was reasonably comfortable. I think initially it was a little bit claustrophobic, but actually after a while, because he could take it on and off himself, I think eventually Nikolai sort of, well, quite quickly got used to it. It was just getting it so close fitting that it had a little hinge so you could actually <laughs> sit inside it and just then it would hinge shut and it has a sort of leather piece that straps on. Craftsmanship is exquisite. I like it so much. Welcome to chop off your own hand and take it. And I think everyone was really worried about how would this hand look, and me included, I, I suppose, <laughs> but I was really pretty determined that it was going to work and to be a thing of great beauty, and it, it really is. I'm so pleased with it. First up we had the, uh, the map room table at Dragonstone, which was about 16 and a half feet long. We had to carve that out of clay and meticulously sort of stamp in every kind of place name, road, a tower, castle and keep. And we built this table, um, which is like a huge map and it's all inlaid with forests and castles and you've got the wall, the, you know, the north wall and it's all, it's, it's pretty gorgeous actually, made here. That was the first set we did, which was really exciting. Um, the, the table design and the concept um, that Gemma had come up with. So we wanted to have a feeling that everything had been carved out of the stone, had come, again, come from its environment. We made a little model of it first, we made a small maquette and got that kind of approved and then came the, the difficult part of, of doing it full size. The art department sort of gave us a map which we then sort of blew up sort of full size and sort of traced that out onto, onto clay and then I had to make little individual letter stamps and push into the clay every place name. For the, the flames and because it was going to be a very dark environment to, to light up the key pieces um, we came up with the idea of inlaying precious jewels and metal into the table and came up with, yeah, something that looked pretty amazing, I think. We had the, the, the sort of map markers, um, the, the sort of two uh, sort of foot soldiers. We had to sort of carve those to look like they'd been cut, like sort of carved out of wood. It was such a critical piece to get right. It evolved over quite a long time and it was one of the designs that was started very early knowing that it needed to kind of be seen. You know, there's a lot of contribution to the idea and what has to work and what you're trying to tell in the story. It's not like in your face, but if they catch it occasionally, you get a sense of it, which is lovely for, for Stannis. And so that was a bit of a treat to do that one, actually. I like that set. It was a bit of real fantasy up there. These armies are toys for the Lord of Light. Tell your Lord to burn them, then. I tell him nothing. I pray for his commands and I obey. My little brother has 100,000 men, according to the scouts. Men whose allegiance rightly belongs to me. You must have faith. Faith? 